We are splitting this presentation into three parts. An introduction to climate change and the effect on birds and their ranges. Then a look at range changes for six different bird species that are well known in Florida and along the East Coast. And finally, some ideas on what we can do to conserve bird habitat as conditions change and suggest some actions we can take individually and collectively. We love the birds that share our backyards and our lives. However, things are changing. Birds are arriving earlier, and they overwinter in places they once left when cold winds blew. The world scientists agree that the planet is heating up. The main culprits are excess carbon dioxide, also known as CO2, and methane. The amount of carbon dioxide and methane in the atmosphere determines how hot the planet gets. These invisible compounds are called greenhouse gases because they trap heat. As we burn more fossil fuels, such as coal, natural gas, and oil, these gases are trapped in the atmosphere for hundreds of years in the case of carbon dioxide. So the more we burn, the hotter things get. We see the effects all around us and being reported on the news. Droughts, melting glaciers, and ocean acidification. Melting glaciers raise sea levels and dilute ocean salinities which may potentially alter ocean currents. Acidification from carbon dioxide dissolving in ocean water is attacking coral reefs and affecting the base of ocean food webs. We all feel the changes, record-breaking high temperatures, longer and more intense heat waves, and extreme and more frequent wildfires thanks to drought and insect infestation that kills trees. Annually, we are already 1.6 degrees hotter on average than we were just 150 years ago. Climate change means record high temperatures and more extreme weather events. Heat waves will last longer, arctic blasts will come out of nowhere, and thunderstorms will be more intense. These events affect the life cycles and distributions of our plants and animals. We're seeing it with birds as well. Over the last 50 years, more than 60% of wintering North American bird species, such as this American robin, have shifted northward in winter. Formerly, southern species like northern mockingbirds and the Carolina wren have moved northward. Others, like purple finches, don't seem to come as far south in the winter. These trends were detailed in Audubon's 2009 report, Birds and Climate Change, Ecological Disruption in Motion. As winters warm, birds are wintering farther north and moving inland. The purple finch has shown the biggest shift, moving north 433 miles. While milder winter temperatures may be the new normal, so too are dramatic cold snaps like those produced by the polar vortex in 2015. Birds exposed to rapid, extreme temperature changes may be ill-equipped to survive. Audubon scientists thought, wouldn't it be handy if we could create an Audubon guide to future bird ranges, much like the Sibley guide many of us use now? Those scientists have recently completed this sort of guide. Computer modeling of how bird distributions may shift as the climate changes could help us design effective strategies to ensure the future of our birds. Before we talk about the results, it may be helpful to review reasons why this guide was so challenging to create. There are at least two reasons. First, the future is uncertain. We don't know how successful society will be at curtailing greenhouse gases or whether we will have business as usual. The graph at left shows warming under different combinations of greenhouse gas emissions and economic expansion. An infinite number of possible scenarios in the future make predictions very complicated. However, we can summarize the possibilities into three scenarios, a high, mid, and low greenhouse gas future. The second problem is what Audubon chief scientist Gary Langham calls the web of life problem. The science of ecology is complicated because ecological communities are highly intertwined, making future predictions very difficult. How can we expect to pull on one thread, yet keep the web intact? Despite these hurdles, Audubon scientists wanted to look explicitly at how this warming world would affect the birds we love. We have great data from both the North American Breeding Bird Surveys and our own Christmas bird counts, the longest-running citizen science data collection effort in the world. Together, those data sets inform us about what birds to expect in a given climate. Audubon modeling related 40 years of bird observations to 17 climate variables to develop their future predictions. 
Audubon combined these bird sightings with a full range of climate layers, both historical and future. They cover every aspect of temperature, precipitation, and seasonality. The scientists then devised a mathematical relationship between where a bird occurs and its climate. With that relationship in hand, they projected bird ranges into future climate predictions. Audubon mapped 588 species in North America against climate models that predict how much the climate could change in the future. To test the model, Audubon scientists used it to predict where we would find birds for years not included in the model. In every case, the model performed well. Every bird has a set of environmental conditions that enable it to thrive because it has adapted over millennia to a specific set of climate variables. This pinion jay has its entire life history tightly connected to the availability of conifer seeds. Already of conservation concern, this jay is projected by Audubon's climate model to be challenged as climate change affects its food source. The modeling predicted that 314 species, nearly half of all bird species regularly found in North America, are seriously threatened by global warming and, without action, some could face extinction. The 314 species of birds threatened by climate change includes 126 climate-endangered birds whose range will contract and 188 climate-threatened species whose range will shift. Species that lose 50% or more of their range by 2080, but with the potential to expand to new areas, are considered climate-threatened. Bird species that lose 50% or more of their range by 2050, without the potential for range expansion, are considered climate-endangered. For birds that may see their climate space expand, we need to continue to protect them from other hazards they face. For birds that may move into new areas, we'll need to look at conservation strategies that can help them make that transition. And the same holds true. Protect the places they need now to create a bridge to the future. And while the circle says panic, we're not going to throw in the towel on those birds whose range is shrinking. The model also provides a road map of places birds will need in the future, and we can make those places a conservation priority. By 2080, the great icon of the north, the common loon, is forecast to lose 56% of its current summer range and 75% of its current winter range. In both seasons, the potential to shift northward in a warming climate is possible. While the bird may be able to keep pace with the rapidly changing world, it appears all but certain that Minnesota will lose its iconic loons in summer by the end of this century. The bald eagle, national symbol of the United States, is projected to have only 26% of its current summer range remaining by 2080. It may find new areas opening up in a shifting climate, but it is uncertain whether it will find suitable nesting habitat or prey. If the climate changes too much, birds will be forced away from the places in which they live now. Through changing weather patterns and resource availability, the characteristics of established habitats, from plant communities to insect biodiversity, will be different. If those shifts are too extreme, bird populations will suffer. Birds may not find the right foods when they need them, or find the right places to live. They may not have time to adapt. Anything we can do to slow the advances of global warming buys them more time. Now let's move to part two of our discussion and examine range changes for six Florida birds. There will be winners and losers. We have selected six species presently common in Florida habitats, but whose future could be in serious jeopardy from climate change and sea level rise. You can visit www.audubon.org forward slash climate for the full list and maps of Florida birds showing their potential range changes. As an example, Audubon's climate model predicts that by 2080, the burrowing owl could lose 77% of its current U.S. breeding range. The burrowing owl is already a species of conservation concern because modern agricultural practices have removed the prairie dogs and ground squirrels that it depends on to provide nesting burrows. Development of all kinds has disrupted its habitat in Florida. Let's take the roseate spoonbill, whose delicate pink feathers and strange spoon-shaped bill make it a popular and attractive bird, at once beautiful and bizarre. Roseate spoonbills are currently widespread and numerous from Florida to Argentina.
In Florida, these birds have been moving from historical Everglades breeding grounds as sea level rise floods their feeding sites to central Florida as they search for more suitable habitat. Pelican Island Audubon Spoonbill Watch is a new monitoring program to track the movement of these birds northward. This slight animation shows the changes in the range for the Rosiette Spoonbill from the year 2000 to 2080. Each map displays the approximate range of a bird species in 2000, the solid outline, and the projected climatic suitability ranges for the summer in yellow and winter in blue in 2080. Where the summer and winter ranges overlap in green, the bird will likely be a year-round resident in the future. Though widespread in the neotropics, wood storks were almost eliminated from the United States. Since receiving protection, they have increased dramatically. However, Audubon's climate change model projects a 98% decrease of summer range in the United States from 2000 to 2080. The brown-headed nuthatch is a non-migratory bird adapted for year-round residence in its critical longleaf pine habitat a habitat which is at risk even without climate change. Audubon's climate map predicts a 100% loss of its summer range by 2080. The population of the red knot is declining because they depend on eggs of horseshoe crabs for food. These crabs have been severely depleted by overharvesting. Audubon's climate model shows a loss of over three quarters of suitable winter areas in North America, with Florida showing particularly sharp losses. Because most birds winter along coastal areas, rising sea levels will play a key role in determining the red knot's future survival. The hooded merganser, a fish-eating duck, winters across the United States. Audubon's climate model projects a 65% loss of its current winter range by 2080. However, the model predicts a dramatic expansion northward into areas where the species is typically expected to occur only during nesting season, potentially resulting in a massive seven-fold increase in its summer range. Part 3. What can we do to help as individuals, as communities, as voters, and as advocates? While maps and numbers paint a startling picture, they also give us cause for hope. We all know how resilient nature is. If given half a chance, birds will find a way to survive. Let's focus on solutions. We've touched on a few. Make your backyard and neighborhood bird friendly. Go native with plants. Save water and time and create a haven for birds and the plants and insects many of them rely on. For many species, the Audubon climate change model has identified strongholds for each species, geographic areas that will provide shelter against the decades-long wave of climate change that is already washing over us. Those strongholds will be the key to many birds' continued success in North America. How can we protect these areas? We can protect the places where birds live and raise their young through our work with important bird areas, also known as IBAs, through habitat restoration, through advocacy in our communities, or by creating a bird-friendly backyard. Let's stay focused on solutions. We've touched on a few. Make your backyard and your neighborhood a bird-friendly community. Go native. Save water and time and create a haven for birds and the insects many of them rely on. We can put birds on our community's agenda by starting conversations with our neighbors, our colleagues, and our local leaders about why it's important to protect our community's birds. Here are some ideas on how we can reach more people. Write a letter to the editor of the newspaper, speak at a community event, and visit a local school. There are ways to reduce your carbon footprint, and most of them will save you money. You can plug leaks in your home's insulation, install a smart thermostat, switch to more efficient light bulbs, turn off the lights in any rooms where you do not use them, drive fewer miles by consolidating trips, by carpooling, riding a bike, or taking public transit, waste less food, and eat less meat. Perhaps the biggest single thing you can do is to take fewer airplane trips. Just one or two fewer plane rides per year could save as much in emissions as all the other actions combined. If you really want to be on the cutting edge, you can look at buying an electric or a hybrid car, putting solar panels on your roof, or both. There are specific actions we can insist that Florida State Government can take. Demand better public transportation and curb urban sprawl. 
urged the Florida State Legislature to follow the intent of Amendment 1. Revised state water policy to truly protect water resources, including protection of the Everglades. More water flowing to the Everglades will protect South Florida's aquifers from saltwater intrusion as sea level rises. We need to invest much more in new energy technologies, solar power being first on the list. Ordinary citizens need to speak up. We must urge leaders at the local, state, and national levels to enact policies that lower greenhouse gas emissions and limit the effects of global warming on birds. Ultimately, we need leadership from federal policymakers. We must demand action and ask how do you plan to address global warming. We've done it before and we can do it again. When birds were hunted nearly to the point of extinction for their plumes, Audubon, in its infancy a century ago, came together and stopped it. Together we can make a difference. We can slow the progress of global warming and we can plan for the future. We can do this for the future of our children and their children and for the future of the birds we all cherish. For more information on the report and how you can help, visit Audubon's climate website. Visit www.audubon.org forward slash climate. The time for change is now. The climate science is clear and our birds are providing the warning. So please heed our Audubon message and act now.